Good day, sir. Good day, classmates. The topic that I'm going to report today is Chapter 6, Homicide Investigation Checklist. Let's start. Homicide Investigation Checklist. So, Homicide Investigation Checklist, these are the methods and process that the officers must do if there are is a homicide case investigation so first is arrival at the crime scene so upon arrival at the crime scene uh, officers must take a path of route least likely to disturb evidence officers enter the scene by taking a path or route which is likely to disturb evidence nothing the route of travel so the first officer that arrives on the scene of the crime should approach the scene slowly and methodoc methodically. Approach the scene slowly and methodically. Next is check victim signs of flight. The officer or the first responding officer must check the signs of life of the victim upon arrival. There are methods of verification of death such as pulse, um, heartbeat, and breathing. So the first officer must always secure the life of the victim and call immediate medical assistance like 911 or the nearest hospital. Lastly is the note, the time of arrival. Then, the officers must check the time when first arrived at the scene and note it for the, big, for the living victim. So, in, in situations where the victim is alive or still living, these are the police officers must do in this situation. This officer, police officer should do in this situation. First is call immediate medical assistance. First thing to do is call immediate medical assistance. So an officer must always protect the life of the victim and secure the secure the victim secure that the victim will be saved in critical situations. Next is take dying declaration. If the victim is conscious trying to obtain the so, you, officers must try to obtain the following information like Who did this to you? So, in situations when the suspect or assailant is unknown to the victim, the officer should start questioning and identification by description of gender and then race, color of hair, complexion, eyes, types of clothing, approximate age, height, weight, body built, etc. And establish and also establish the fact that the victim knows that he or she is under the belief of impression of an impending death. Next is for unconscious victims. First is make sure the officer is with the victim at all times. This will make sure that the statements from the victim will be get by the officers because anytime the victim can make dying declaration. At the scene, if the victim is unconscious on the arrival at the scene, make sure that a police officer remains with the victim at all times, including trip to the hospital so that any dying declaration made under consciousness can be duly taken or noted. Upon arrival at hospital, alert medical personnel for the dying declarations. Well, we all know that in the hospital, in emergency room, police or any other persons are not allowed to go inside in the operating room. So let's say, for example, a police officer cannot get the dying declaration because he is outside waiting for the result of the operation. So officers, uh, so officers must tell the medical staff or the doctor 
to take the dying declaration of the victim. So, medical personnel likelihood must to likelihood must be alert of the dying declarations. Well, uh, officers must re request them to not said the to not tell anyone about the dying declarations if made during the operation period. Next is request to advise immediately if victim regains consciousness so that you will be present when declaration is to be undertaken. So um, officers must always be at the victim, at the side of the, uh, at the side of the victim or, or near the victim to get the dying declaration, uh, because anytime uh, the the victim will will tell the dying declaration. Also, the because this information from the victim is crucial for the progress of the case. Next is removal of the victim from crime scene. Photograph victim's position before removing and carefully note down the position of the victim in report. So when you remove the victim at the crime scene, for example, the victim needs immediate medical assistance. So the victim must be delivered immediately to the hospital. Before exclusion, if possible, uh, officers must photograph the victim's position at the crime scene. And if circumstances would permit before removal, carefully note down the position of the victim in the report or in, in officer's report. Next is acquire physical evidence from the victim. First is officers escorting the victim to the hospital should collect victim's clothing and personal effects as they come available. Officers must only collect the victim's uh, clothing and personal effects if only it is available because if the officer will get it in critical situation it can cause annoyance to the victim and also endanger the life of the victim if officer insists collecting personal effects in critical situations next is officer removing items should carefully record record time received and the identity of the person from whom the items received. Next is, if necessary for identification, items handled by physicians and other medical personnel should be marked by those persons in chain of custody noted. So the vital items in, such as bullets and etc., the chain of custody must always be. Uh, so um. This, uh, this particularly vital in items such as bullets and etc. Chain of custody must always be recorded because or must always be observed because it will be used in court in a court and if not followed can lead to the failure of investigation and presenting to the court. So a failure to follow up in collecting objects that left in a crime scene with a victim may cause their loss or they may cause their loss of or render them useless as evidence. Next is notify headquarters of status, then notify command of your office, then request for assistance. So request assistance if needed or request assistance from the export expert in kinds of field that will help the investigation in progress. Next is a request notification of the office of the prosecutor's representative. So the lawyer must in this in this part uh, the lawyer must know its boundaries in expertise and lawyer is only for legal questions so the officers must not allow the lawyer to get involved in actual investigation because their training limits them to providing advice on legal issues only. Then request typification of medical legal examiner. 
The next is protecting the crime scene. So these are the process on which protecting the crime scene so that evidences will not be tampered and disturbed. First is block or rope of scene. So block or rope of scene for the persons at the per persons at the scene. So uh, we always observe this on the news and crime movies, the roping of the scene or blocking. They, so commonly they use yellow police line tape that may be used to keep citizens away from the crime scene. Next is discharge and auto discharge and authorized persons from the scene. As an officer, you cannot worry about hurting someone's feelings. If they do not belong, tell them to leave. This include any unauthorized police officers also. Next is prelude anyone from touching the body or disturbing anything. Before arrival at oh before arrival of the medical examiner, identification personnel and investigative officer, an officer that assigned must prevent anyone from touching the body or or disturbing evidences. The crime, the crime scene must preserve in the same condition as it was when the first officer arrived. As a result, no items or evidence must, must be altered. So for the witnesses, the officers must note the name and address of persons at hand, obtain brief, sit brief statements from each person present, confine witnesses until arrival of the investigator, keep witnesses isolated to prevent conversation and prevent destruction of fragile evidence such as footprints and tire tracks. Next is the process, the crime scene. First is be aware that there are search and seizure problems in this area. So if in doubt, you, you may wish to contact the office of the prosecutor to obtain advice. At night, um, get hold of sufficient lighting equipment before, before crime scene processing starts. So at night, most of the evidence is not visible on our in our naked eye and photographs needs consistent light to capture details so um, the investigators or the officers must or needs artificial light lighting and it must be satisfactory for photography and for minute detail search for items such as hair cartridge case and etc In situations where light lighting is unavailable or insufficient or not sufficient, the officers or investigators must protect the scene under guard and wait for daylight before processing it to begin. Next is the note the time of arrival. So they must note weather condition, especially outside the crime scene, and check perimeter of the scene. Photograph scene. These are the activities of crime photographers as well as the kind of photographs they take at the crime scene. First is take photograph scene from all angles. So the photographs must start from perimeter of the scene to the center. Next is include photographs of entrance, exit routes to the scene. So note that there is no such thing as too many photographs of the crime scene. So every photographs that include is vital to for the investigation. Next is make sure that all potential locations relevant to the scene are photographed. Specifically significant that all rooms at scene 
are photographed since something may have took place in an adjoining room that will be of critical importance as the investigation develops. Next is photographs specific items of evidence such as cartridge cases, footprints, weapons, etc. As observed in the scene where scale is important, use ruler scale to illustrate just like in the picture. As you can see, uh, the, the ruler is on the opposite side of the shoe print. Next is overhead. Overhead photograph should be taken outdoor scenes. This includes streets in intersections, which may be very useful in constructing scale representation. Use extent. Use extension ladders which may be provided by fire trucks or power company for this purpose. So in the example picture, the crime scene photographer used the bridge to take overhead photographs. Next is, next is the videotape. Videotape recordings should be made of scene whenever possible. This includes shots collecting evidence examining the victim at the scene as well as documenting the defendant and witness if doable. So this documented videotape and shots from the crime scene can be used if the court needed evidences of collecting and examining crime scene. The things they perform in the scenario are captured on videotapes and photos. Next is photograph victim at scene. So color photographs should be taken of the disease from all angles. The next is photograph disease as items are removed from the body. For example, the items such as personal effects, clothing, and other items from the body. The next is take full length and close up photograph of substances on the body and clothing of disease such as seminal fluid that are common in rape cases, blood, powder, residue, and other substances. Lastly, photograph wounds and injuries including close-ups, which should be undertaken step by step as body is examined and dis disrobed by medical examiner at the scene. Next is Make careful notice of the following. First is position of the body. Next is position, condition of clothing. Next is location of substances and disease and his clothing. Next is a survey scene. Take carefully measurements of the scene assessing each room in the house. So it is very hard to return data to us in so it, so, it is very hard to return later to a scene if you do not possess a search warrant. That's, that's why the officers must be careful in assessing each room and make sure that uh, they search it properly. Next is use reference point that is immovable. Search scene. So search scene. This, uh, these are the methods on how the experts search the things in a crime scene. First is the searching of the disease. Before removing, check for physical evidence such as fibers, loose hair, etc. Then place disease on a cloth sheet, moving the body at the shortest possible distance. Then examine the ground underneath the victim. Inspect disease for additional physical evidence that may become visible after movement. Then collect physical evidence from disease including personal effects, clothing, shoes, weapons, and the like. Next is searching the scene. So in searching the scene area, searching the scene area, it must be organized by adapting specific plans and assigning tasks to areas of search to individual police officers. Assigning 
thus to individual police officers to widen the range of the search area and collect more evidence in short time. Designate uh, one police officer to collect, mark, and trans transport items found. Then execute search by carefully following plan of assigned task. Then note also the mark and photograph locations of objects such as latent, latent fingerprints, footprints, tool marks, tire tracks, hair, fragments of cloth, buttons, cigarette butts, bullet holes, cartridge, cartridge cases, and etc. So when collecting evidence at the scene area, do not overlook items such as room furniture, door, etc. that can be used to reconstruct crime scene in court preserve collected evidence individually. To avoid contamination, do not place separate items of evidence in same container. So, uh, use appropriate container. So, every type of evidence has use appropriate container. For example, vials or molded plastic container for blood and seminal fluid, paper bi bindle for fibers and hair, paper bag for bloody items, and also never place evidence that may decompose or deteriorate, deteriorate into a plastic bag. The next is provide information to laboratory personnel concerning origin of item. What test you acquired? What test you acquired? What test you required to be performed? Then the officer must make brief account to the crime laboratory personnel about what investigation initially shows. The next is the process for the defendant. So these are the process for the defendants. First is photograph defendant illustrating any injuries or lack thereof. Put on view his general appearance and clothing. Show bo hands both sides and show scar status and other distinct identifiable features. So, if there are witnesses at the crime scene who recognize such tattoos or scars that relate to the defendant, the information from suspect, suspect's looks will be useful. While addition, in searching for the suspect's tattoos and scars that have been documented by the police or authorities, the public may simply trace that individual by asking them to offer information if they encounter someone with that appearance. So it is very helpful. Next is take hold of any evidence that you are entitled to such as pubic combining rape case, any item that is on the clothing and could be lost. Obtain warrant for blood and hair samples. Next is the autopsy processing. First is arrange through medical legal examiner the transportation of victim to morgue. Second, the investigator and medical legal examiner should be present during autopsy. Third, if, if possible before autopsy, the finger and palm prints of the disease should be taken. This is for the identification purposes, so it can play a crucial role in criminal investigations as it can confirm or Disprove a person's identity. Next is pick up any evidence that was obtained during the autopsy, such as blood samples, fingernail scrapings, hair samples, bullet, bullets, etc. Lastly, place items in separate containers, such as paper bags. Each should be marked, dated, and initiated. So note that it must be separated because as what I have said earlier, evidences is prone to contamination. So if they are not, if they are in not, in not in separated, if they are in separated containers, it will be safe. 
Next is investigative personnel. So this is the duty of the investigative personnel from arrival up to organizing investigation. So the first is obtain summary of information from the first responder. So the investigative personnel will interview the first responder, que uh, question him about uh, about about the crime scene upon the arrival of the first responder. Next is check scene security and take steps needed to correct errors or omission if any. Then review all actions of officers on the scene. So to ensure that the officers execute their assigned job correctly, the investigative personnel or the investigators must review their activities to ensure that the investigation does not fail. Next is commence investigation from the beginning. Then determine the identity of the disease. Next is attempt to construct the events at crime scene by using the relative position of the body. Number and location of wounds, trajectory of bullets in shooting incident, blood stains, and other substances. Signs and indication, indication of violence and other evidences in the crime scene. So with the help of limited evidences, it's like a like like relative position of the body, number and location of wounds, trajectory of bullets and shooting trajectory of bullets in shooting incidents. And other evidences this can provide creation of hypotheses that helps to give explanation by the use of limited evidences only. Next is organize investigation by assigning tasks to individual officers, supervise the execution of delegated tasks, receive record and index information received from investigators. Then lastly, establish a case book to include the following. First is the index of contents, initial report, follow-up report, evidence report, medical report, with witness statements, defendant statements, background on the defendant, background on the disease, evidence logbook, books, photographs, and that's all. The next is obtain detailed statements from first is defendant. So in the obtaining statement from the, the defendant, first is advise him or her of the of the Miranda writes, have the defendant initial or sign write cards or get verbal acknowledgement from the same that the rights were understood and videotape or record the defendant statement. It is your choice whether to tell the defendant that the conversation is recorded and turn that they turn the tape from the start it should designated to answer question pertaining to the case and if counsel is present control the interview next is for the witness so use your decisions to document the conversation or not as a rule Record conversation with the reluctant witnesses. Then establish movements of disease prior to the death to determine the time last seen alive with whom to determine the location to determine what what are they doing. So then the investigation may aided by leads obtained from these informations because the deceased person's last activity before death may provide insight into the cause of the death.
Next is scrutinize his background including the following. Relative, relatives, friends, employment, possible illegal activities, criminal record, finances, possible romantic involvement, possible use of narcotics, gang involvement, and many more. So in homicide cases, investigators must go deeper to the personal life of the deceased person. There are several causes for death of the person, including relationships, acquaintances, family, illegal activities, romantic involvement, and other affiliations. So the investigator or the officer must get statements from the dead person's background, relationships, in order to track down the victim's previous activities and gain more information. Next is if determine actions of defendant before homicide. You may require to cover period of days, weeks, or months before the incident depending on the motive and other circumstances. So the defendant activities in the days, weeks, or months leading up to incident must be tracked down to detect suspicious actions. For example, the defendant has been away for work for several weeks and is continuously visiting stores and pur purchasing tools, indicating that the defendant is preparing to commit a crime. This can be used in a court to sum up the whole scenario before committing to sum up the whole scenario of the defendant before committing the crime. Next is pay attention to unusual actions of defendant, trips and absences from work, home, etc. As I previously stated, the defendant's suspicious and unusual behaviors must always be closely monitored since his absences and trips might indicate that he was planning or preparing for the crime. So this will determine actions of the defendant before homicide. Next is destruction of concealment of, of clothing, weapon, destruction of concealment of clothing, weapon use, and vehicles including cleaning of same to remove blood stains. Next is the practical tips. These are the practical tips in investigation. First is call upon experienced investigator to provide assistance and insight. So there are investigators that have more experience that we can take the assistance to give guidance and insight for the investigation. Question all concerned thoroughly. Be careful in questioning witnesses. Some of them may be involved in the crime scene either as principal accomplices or accessories. So there are witnesses that will lead the investigation to failure. So, investigators should examine properly the witnesses and evaluate their statements. Do not reveal critical information carelessly to witness, witnesses. It may get back to defense and you may end up with what you have divulged to the witness instead of what he or she actually knows about incident. So, um, so, in this part, uh, the officers and investigators must not reveal any important uh, ideas about the investigation. Next is separate witnesses. Separation of witnesses uh, so that their statement is not planned or they, they, will, they will prevent from any conversation. The next is confer and cooperate with the police officers. So other police officers might help the investigation in many ways. For example, providing leads that they have in their system. Next is be courteous and tactful. Give regular attention to dissemination of pertinent information to other agencies. And lastly, do not divulge valuable information to press or unauthorized person. So like I said, Earlier, uh, this will 
this way this may get back to defense and you may end up with what you have divulged to the witness instead of what he or she actually knows about the incident next is report writing facts of the case must be reported so no investigation regardless of how no investigation regardless of how competently undertaken is complete unless accurately put into writing next is reporter uh, reports are investigators channel of communication to command prosecutor and fellow police officers an officer must be able to accurate, accurately record information by the report report about those activities and present it to those who were not there while also doing their job well next is content of the report must include so these are the contents of the report the summary which is brief concise synopsis of operative case facts at the beginning of report list of evidence a catalog of items seized using consecutive numbers for each individual items and specify the following what what seized from whom were stored where stored the what what seized from whom where stored must be answered action taken to indicate next is action taken to indicate if the item was given to crime lab personnel for testing and if so to whom next is up action needed identifying any processing remaining to be undertaken next is list of witnesses with brief statement of what their testimony pertains to in connection with the case next is witness statement so it is from interviews and questioning then next do not include so contents in report that must not be included are your opinion concerning the value of the case so the report must show all the angles and sides of the event emotion opinion and personal prejudice should always be avoided so the report must be equal each side of the story any any opinion of the creator of report must be avoided so emotions and personal prejudice must be set aside and focus must be in the incident to show all sides of the story correctly and lastly irrelevant material that's all thank you